linking what we do on farm with the reef in the in the reef catchment here it's uh, we're, we're both wanting the same thing the the less the less runoff and sediment into the reef the the better for the reef itself however from the farm's point of view the less runoff and sediment runoff that's that's all nutrients and and topsoil and and the more we can hold that on farm and hold that that moisture make that more available to have increase our water use efficiency so overall it's it's a win-win for for both reef and farm and and then the people and, and communities that are that are within those those catchment areas Project Pioneer is a federal and state funded uh, program to reduce the runoff of uh, undesirables into the barrier reef through the, uh, the massive uh, catchment system that takes up the eastern seaboard. And uh, our space is to encourage farmers and graziers to change their practices to, to move into regenerative agriculture. The difference between ecological health and health of the business sometimes seems to be mutually exclusive. And what we want to do is overlay one on top of the other so that, that one of the markers of profitability is the ecological health that we can grow of the business. When people first start the project, a lot of what I, what I witness from, from my side is, is people are, are nervous, they're, they're hesitant, they're not sure what they're getting themselves in for. Quite often they, they realise um, that they want to change in some, some capacity. And once they, once they start going through some of the, the educational side of things, um, you know, they, they're starting to, to build a little bit of knowledge and, and then they can work more on, on farm, like when they, when they take what they've learnt in the schools on farm and apply it, they're able to build their, their skill level. How it might look practically is going out into the paddock and actually measuring to the best of your ability how much grass you have in the paddock and then saying here's how many animals I have this is only going to last me x number of weeks or months I need it to last x times two therefore what have I got to do to last and not scream headlong over a cliff. We are running better stock and so we get, get increased productivity and from a drought point of view, I liken it to be, if we've got our management right and our country healthy, we can be last into drought and first out. What, what we're teaching requires no more physical work, but a higher level of management. And when you move to that higher level, you will get the rewards. And, and, uh, so, and it's very, it's threatening in certain cases this change because it is about running smaller paddocks with higher density of stock than they're accustomed to. That's why the coaching and the support is essential to give them that confidence to move forward. And that's the difference in, in this project is so many farmers go off and do a whole myriad of schools and they get home and they're distracted by what happens at home and they lose it all. This actually embeds the learning process. I suppose it's about balance. It's about balancing the land and the businesses and whatever they produce in a really robust format so that the people can, can be confident that everything that they do uh, is going to keep them there for the longer term rather than, than a precarious short term. So instead of living for this year or this season, uh, we're putting in place things now that are going to have an impact in 10 or 20 or 30 years time as well as some stuff this season but it's got some some short medium and long term term goals. The application in the in the property situation is that if we are running a good grazing operation we can be running a profitable grazing operation and we're getting the um, the production outcomes and we're getting the ecological outcomes on property and we're getting the water quality outcomes. I saw some figures last week across a breadth of people that are, have adopted these principles from North Queensland through to Victoria, all different scale of operations and the, 
the, the figure that comes through is 28% lift in productivity in terms of the utilisation of their pastures. That, if we have the business structure set up correctly, translates into profit. It's a nice result. So the changes we're seeing in the family units, and, and there's a couple in particular, a, a sense of control of their destiny that, yes, we know, we know the figures on the business. We know where the weaknesses are. We can go and take steps to address that. We know where we're doing well, so we can actually build on our strengths, improve those areas where we're weak. But I see the big one is, is in basic well-being the well-being in the people themselves, that because they have, they feel in control, they're happier. The comment I had um, just this last week was, uh, you know, the, the, the last 12 months it's been the, the worst drought that, that uh, this particular business has, has ever um, been through. However, it's been the least amount of stress that they've ever had, which is, you know, like that's, that's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. The potential for Ecological regeneration, family regeneration, small business regeneration, and, and also corporate regeneration if, if they want to be involved as well, is, is, is already proven. And, and, and it's, it's as far as people want to take it. I believe that gra for grazing, for healthy country, we need skilled and fulfilled people out there. It's a wonderful initiative because what it's doing is it is changing people it is changing the landscape and it is producing profitable agriculture.